Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War event objectives for the Perfect Storm event in which the Storm Chaser is added to the game. This week is also the 7th year anniversary for Gems of War, and we're going to be having quite a few things going on this week, and going into the next week, kind of corresponding with it. Uh, of course, we're going to be having the uh, seasonal pet that ends up coming in for every single year for the uh, occasion uh, this Wednesday. We're also going to be having some special stuff off Adventure Board, and whatever else they have planned. Uh, with the 6.0 update that happened last Tuesday, we also have a pretty big thing happening pretty much at the end of the anniversary week, which will be the addition of a new kingdom, which we haven't had for about two months now, as well as a brand new event. Even though we did have a 6.0 patch last Tuesday, there's basically nothing that really affected it at this current moment in time. Very few things really change, and uh, it's basically a patch that, to a degree, doesn't really take effect until next Monday when we have all the events actually taking place. But anyways, let's start and uh, get into all the normal stuff. So as far as the glory trip that we have going on this week, it is Storm Chaser. It is a uh, epic, so you can end up getting green, yellow arcanes for only 200 glory each. As far as the troop itself, it is pretty underwhelming. While the next kingdom coming up will have a lot of elemental options, this isn't really going to be worth it, even if you are against a four times elemental team. It destroys a row for each elemental enemy and then does a bunch of scatter damage. The scatter damage doesn't boost ratio at all, so it's a very underwhelming amount of damage with barely any mana accumulation and this thing does almost nothing if you're not up against elementals so overall just not really worth using even in a pure elemental instance it's probably still not worth using even if the opposing team is using four elementals so overall probably just not really worth it other than just for simple kingdom upgrading purposes which if i'm not mistaken the kingdom can end up reaching 23 stars so do keep in mind that does technically require you indirectly to go get wild plains to level 16 so if you don't have those deep books you might want to hold off on that just for a little bit otherwise your middle offer might be uh, hung up by other things like right now we're being held up on zijin because we end up needing another pet upgraded that does allow us to upgrade the pets if nothing else but anyways as far as uh other things of course as far as the event key drop table this means we have an event key drop table associated to that of wild plains wild plains has a few okay pickups uh overall as a kingdom it is probably worth skipping uh, but there are a few things that if you've been waiting for you might want to uh, end up getting uh, in case you might want to. Uh, this place is very heavy on good Guild War counters. So uh, things that are the null category. Um, it's not a typing that is visible. However, there's a typing in the game of null. Uh, what they do is they deal damage to an enemy with a chance to hit the uh, wrong enemy. Uh, but they end up hitting the specific color for triple damage. They also have an interesting array of traits that make them really good against that specific type as well. So for example, this one of course would be used on brown Guild War days in order to counter brown with triple damage on hit as well as double damage on skull so uh, i believe every single one of these options actually reside specifically in this kingdom and if you were to go spend event keys trying to get all these options are probably the main thing that you're really aiming for as a good majority of these surprisingly especially the lower rarity versions are uh, really lethal on guild war days so if you don't really have like the the books to end up using for uh, guild war days or other options uh, these are generally some pretty good things you can end up incorporating into all of your guild war defend teams which uh, guild wars is next week if I'm not mistaken so uh, you can end up getting them preemptively before Guild Wars starts next week and you'll pretty much be good to go as far as event keys are concerned uh, some pretty good mythics here as well uh, you have Lord of Slaughter which is one of the better skull spammers in the entire game being able to do doom skull spam with a double death mark or chance at double death mark as well as uh, some bleed in there ends up also being the only troop in the entire game that has a hundred percent chance to ignore armor uh, so it hits all of its damage directly to the uh, HP uh, aside from that uh, there's also catches the bull uh, which isn't as as good as the other option however catches the bull is still a pretty nice damage source and also really good for the events going on this week pretty much every single thing you see here except for the four labyrinth troops are available from the drop table the legends are pretty underwhelming from this place however the mythics are decent and the lower rarity stuff up below that particularly all the gnolls are also pretty decent so if you need any of those two options the gnolls or any of the mythics from here you might want to consider throwing out event keys otherwise it is probably a skip week but uh, definitely worth uh, considering if you need the options. As far as the uh, ward event that we have going on this week, uh, do keep in mind this is the last time we have a ward event for technically two weeks now, because next week will be the not ward event. It'll be the new one coming in with the 6.0 uh, oh, update. But as far as this event, it's just rarity order. Uh, though do keep in mind, as far as rarity order, you do get more points for doing the exact same one uh, over again. So in this particular instance, if I keep getting Swamp Lash, I might want to focus that as my epic one. Uh, but basically you want to do it in rarity order, 
But if you keep seeing the same exact uh, room type over and over again, you do want to prioritize that as they do get uh, more points for you, the more you end up doing the same uh, room type. Uh, aside from that, uh, we do have access to extra skull damage and spell damage for this event, which is pretty nice. So you can go down either route. Uh, most likely you will be going down more so the uh, spell route. There are a few different options that you have. Uh, as far as the main core things, you'd probably want to build your team around if you have access to it. Catcher's the Bull is probably one of the main ones, using one of the more man-accumulating weapons against uh, with that. Uh, any of the several that you have as your options uh, would end up working out pretty good with that. Uh, Lord of Slaughter, if you have the other mythic, of uh, course, with Skull Spam going down the inverse route, can end up uh, working out uh, pretty well. Uh, aside from that, if you need something super cheap, throwing a bunch of Chaos Shards at the Labyrinth and then using the Mechatar can be a pretty good option. Not only does he have Splash and is really accessible if you don't have other options, but he also has some silent spam that he can end up doing. Well, not the greatest option. He is uh, one of the cheapest viable things that you can end up incorporating into your team to end up getting the event done. There are also a lot of really good uh, weapons that you can end up doing it, uh, as well as uh, all of them being in Soul Forge this week. Uh, the main four being uh, Rage Weaver, which I'd probably say is the uh, best one to end up picking up if you're going to pick up any weapon this week. You probably want to get Rage Weaver. It's uh, mostly used for catches the bull, however, it can be incorporated into pretty much any red Taurus team. Ends up dealing some uh, splash damage to an enemy and then ends up creating four red gems boosted by Taurus allies at three per ally. So if you end up having a full team of Taurus, which generally if you're building a build like this you do, that'll be 12 additional gem spawn for a total of 16 reds every single time you cast this, which is a pretty sizable amount. Uh, a little bit of a high mana cost at 15 routes of that, but it can end up getting some pretty good value and will generally fill all of your red Tauruses on your team. And almost every single damage related Taurus does end up incorporating red. So it ends up working out uh, pretty well as well as something from other kingdoms that you can't use for this like a bull Taurus for example. Uh, While well, you can't use it in this event it synergizes really well uh, with that. That's also a much lower uh, rarity troop only at an epic rather than a mythic. Aside from that, getting any of like the standard kind of um, double uh, weapons, we have uh, I believe two of them here, one for Tauruses and one for uh, Wild Plains. Uh, the Wild Plains one being probably slightly more viable, though depending on what kind of team you're doing could go either way. And of course there's also Wild Cleaver which does a bunch of explosions, summons a Wild Plains troop and ends up giving some stats effects to Wild Plains uh, troops. Uh, between the four of them, Rage Weaver I would say is highest priority, uh, Wild Cleaver probably second highest priority, and the other two you'd get situationally depending on which one you'd really want for a team depending on what your composition is. Uh, none of them are bad, but Rage Reaver is definitely particularly noteworthy compared to the uh, rest of them. And of course there's some other items for the most part you wouldn't really use any of the other ones though, um, as they are pretty average uh, overall. Anyways, uh, so that's how the world event would end up going down. As far as other things that we got going on this week, uh, there are a, a few of them. Uh, this Tuesday, we have the uh, faction event for the Labyrinth. This is a very annoying faction to do, mostly because of the tank. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you go all in on that tank. It is uh, one that can be done with out uh, potions. However, I would kind of advise doing it with potions. It's a pretty annoying location, and uh, it'll make it a lot simpler, if nothing else. As far as the Wednesday, as I mentioned, we will be getting the 2021 uh, seven-year anniversary pet for Gems of War. It's like a little eclair thing. Uh, that we keep getting some kind of different pastry every single year and they're doing an eclair this time since they're probably starting to run low on different pastries that they could end up doing after uh, seven years of it. But uh, we're going to be getting that this Wednesday for the uh, 70 anniversary. Thursday, of course, we got the Shaman Hero Class event. Shaman, super situational. You pretty much only use it if you're using a four times Taurus team. However, you're going to be needing that for quite a few things this week between the class event itself and the ward events. So, um, and probably as well as some of the weekly objectives. So, um, definitely worth uh, at least uh, messing around with and considering. Uh, but he is used almost exclusively just with four times Taurus teams and basically never uh, any other time. Mostly because, of course, it has 50% mana start for all of them. And while there is a different that does it it's normally better just to use your hero class and this friday we're going to be having a zazian uh raids event one thing that's kind of funny is of course that mythic that we got last friday is still available all this week however there's theoretically also a small chance you could end up getting it from the raid event well i wouldn't depend on that it's kind of funny because the as soon as the uh, thing ends you're pretty much going to go straight into another chance of being able to get the uh, mythic that's available right now and that mythic is still pretty good if you have some glory gem guild or vip chest laying around i do advise at least trying for the new goblin uh, mythic that came out last uh, Friday. 
uh, while it doesn't necessarily work in like every infinite uh, loop team, it is still a pretty good man accumulating option and a pretty consistent triple summoner. And uh, it's definitely worth considering, especially if you don't have too many uh, mythics, can be a nice stable kind of man accumulator as you're progressing uh, through the game. And while it's normally not as viable to end up getting man accumulators, the fact that it's a triple summon that are all extra turn related can end up being pretty uh, beneficial. So potentially worth still going for that. But yeah, it's also could be used for the Friday faction event, I mean for the Friday raid event, which of course is a Zayjin uh, restriction raid event. So we have that going on this Friday. Aside from that, uh, we also have a pet this uh, Saturday. I actually, off the top of my head, completely forget what pet that is now. <laughs> but we are indeed getting a pet this Saturday. Oh, I remember which one it is. It's the community pet from 2018, that one little dragon kitty. I remember now. But yeah, we're getting the dragon kitty this um, Saturday. So if you didn't end up uh, getting that from ages ago, I think there's been a few attempts or a few instances where you could end up getting that pet. But if you haven't already, definitely make sure to pick it up or just get more copies as most people probably don't have it maxed as uh, you'd have to spend gems to do so. So as far as Soul Forge, there's two exceedingly relevant things that you probably want to um, maybe consider getting. Uh, the very first is, uh, well, we're back in Weaver. <laughs> Once again, it has been available for like the last month, but uh, if you still have not picked up your Weaver, I am pretty sure this is the very last week you do so, though at this point I have no clue. It's been available in the Soul Forge for about one month now at half price. If you have not picked it up yet, you definitely should. <laughs> if you've been saving all this time, I'm pretty sure you have enough for Weaver by now, especially after the Vault event that just ended. So I would advise getting it this week, as I am pretty, pretty sure this is a definitively the final week that will be around. And then once the New Kingdom comes out, it probably will not be in Soul Forge anymore. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure to pick this thing up for at half price. It is an absolute steal, plus it's used for Guild War next week, so you can use it for that. Uh, the other thing that is exceedingly relevant, of course, is Ironhawk. I believe this is the third time uh, since its release that it has been available in Soulforge. Either second or third, I'm pretty sure it's third. Uh, of course, Ironhawk, uh, as you probably know, is uh, the most efficient way to end up farming out uh, Vault events, as well as farming for EXP. Not class EXP, but specifically the bigger number for hero EXP. But uh, it's most notably used for farming gnomes. Uh, you can end up doing it with uh, two of them, with uh, a empower into a dust devil, and kill out the entire enemy team. This is ideal in either uh, wild plains, uh, which this week you probably wouldn't want to do it there, or some place like Cinem Raj. Pretty much any locations that have a really low amount of stats, where 25 damage can end up killing out the entirety of the battle. And you just double cast that, be good to go. Uh, it is one of those weird mythics that you do need two of to really be viable. One doesn't really do that much, but two just opens up so many farming methods. You can win about six per minute when you end up doing that team and it's generally how once you finally have it is how you would farm all of vault events going forward and uh, can end up getting a lot of extra loot off of vault events and noma paloozas and even though we just had one it is still a very exceedingly good pickup to have as of course it'll affect all future vault events and even if you don't use it for that you can just use it for some really quick xp farming not for class xp but for the bigger hero xp if you want to uh, end up farming that but anyways uh yeah highly advise getting two of these at some point obviously that's quite a bit of diamonds at 8,000. But it's definitely something that you would want to consider uh, eventually getting. And if you have been saving for all this time, well, now is your time to do so. And uh, if you haven't been, probably pick up a Weaver and then start saving all your gems until Double Iron Hawk comes back again. And hopefully by the time he rotates back around, you'll be able to get two of them. Because realistically, this thing's not rotating back around until next year. Probably around like February or March. So, of course, we have no way of knowing for sure. But sometime around there. So if you want to start saving ahead of time, pick up your Weaver and then... Start saving diamonds for the Double Iron Hawk at some point, as uh, Double Iron Hawk is probably among one of the most important things to get in the current state of the game, as far as diamonds or specifically getting something is uh, concerned, just due to the fact that it helps you farm uh, Vault Events quicker, and Vault Events being farmed quicker gets you pretty much every resource within the game, uh, or at least a good majority of them. But uh, anyways, yes, those are the two main pickups, a Weaver for the building of time, or Double Iron Hawk if you happen to have that many diamonds. Aside from that, uh, as far as weapons are concerned, honestly, any of the weapons I mentioned earlier are pretty viable. Rage Weaver probably being highest priority if you're going to go for only one singular weapon this week. Uh, mostly because if you're using, if you own Catches the Bull, you pretty much just want to have this weapon. Uh, almost every uh, Catches the Bull team ends up incorporating it. And even if you don't, you can end up doing it with Bull Tauruses, which are uh, an epic version that can kind of do kind of similar. Not exactly the same, but can still do some okay damage relative to their rarity. Uh, aside from that, getting any of the, like, the standard man accumulator options here is perfectly fine. Not super high priority, but maybe worth considering like the mass exploding one, which is probably highest priority, or any of the other two double uh, gem creating uh, weapons. Uh, they're not horrible. Uh, they have their purposes, 
and uh, they can uh, mostly be incorporated into um, either a few null teams or with uh, anything kind of centered around Ketris the Bull. But anyways, that's everything for there. So let's go over then all of the teams for this uh, week. As per usual, all of them will be in the description below if you want to go and copy paste any of them. So as far as the reward event team, you could do pretty much any combination of Ketris into Soothsayer, either one, two, or three, where you offset the rest of it with uh, various mana accumulators or possibly one other damage source if you only have one Ketris the Bull. In this particular instance, we're doing it with Rage Weaver, double Ketris the Bull into Soothsayer. When I actually run it, I'm probably just going to run three Ketris the Bull, but of course, not worth going out of your way to go three Ketris the Bull just to do that. But if you have it laying around, you pretty much want to run every Ketris the Bull you have into your composition if you're rolling it down uh, that way. And if you happen to have one of both the Mythics, you can kind of offset it with a Lord of Slaughter as well if you really wanted to. If you need something cheaper, you can end up doing the same Rage Weaver weapon into the Horned uh, Guardian. Both of these are from the Labyrinth, so you can just throw a bunch of Chaos Shards at the Labyrinth and end up getting these. You also will get this pretty easily on the Tuesday event. So if you end up doing the Tuesday uh, Raid or the Tuesday... Um, a uh, faction event that we have going on for the Labyrinth. Uh, just buying a couple of those tiers will automatically guarantee give you the epic anyways. Uh, Mechatar is uh, pretty okay. Damage source is mostly used for a silence, but it will hold down your damage, especially since you're getting extra spell damage from the event. So it's a uh, kind of average amount of damage will at least be somewhat more competent since it will be getting boosted from all that. And then you just use the Rage Reaver to get a bunch of reds. Your entire team ends a boost ratioing off of it. And you use Shaman class. So you have half mana start on your entire team because they're all Tauruses. And you kind of just scale from there and just kind of go crazy. Your tank just keeps tanking. Your hero man accumulates, it, man accumulates everything. And your mecha tars just do all your damages while also doing some silence in there. As far as the event for uh, the actual faction itself, you could just run through with Tesla. If you don't have Tesla, you could run a standard Rowane team. Uh, most of the Rowane builds can end up being incorporated into it based on the color restriction. And if you want to go down the Tesla route, the color restriction also allows you to end up doing that. And it's probably one of the more viable things that you could do as far as getting through the entire area. As far as pure faction is concerned, it can be a little annoying. Uh, the main premise is you have a Horned Guardian, they have a Horned Guardian. Who's ever Horned Guardian lives longer wins. That is pretty much the entire premise. Uh, you definitely want to kill the Horned Guardian as quickly as possible. Because if the final battle is just your Horned Guardian against their Horned Guardian, the battle will basically go on forever. So you want to make sure you dispose of it as quickly as possible. One of the best strategies is to try to silence, spam, and uh, negate out the enemy team before they can do anything to you. And just kind of chip it down that way and end up getting your win. And you have the Mythic here, or sorry, the Legend here. In order to have a 50% mana start to uh, Tauruses, as well as just getting a little bit of extra uh, damage in there. But your main premise is to get them silenced, get it killed, and then as soon as your Horned Guardian is alive while theirs is dead, you basically just auto-win because he just tanks forever, and, and then you just went off of that. And that's pretty much the faction in a nutshell. It can be a little bit annoying, but once you get down that one tanky unit, you basically just win. As far as Shaman class, a couple different things that we can run for this. You could even just use literally any of the teams that you just used for the um, World event. Uh, well, most of them anyways, because you're restricted to specifically uh, Taurus plus uh, anything from Wild Plains. However, a good majority of them are Tauruses, so almost anything that you use for the Ward event can probably be brought into the Shaman class event this Thursday. So if you don't want to run this, you can just run whatever you were running most the rest of the week, most likely, uh, assuming there are also Tauruses. And aside from that, this Friday we're going to be having the raid event. It will be Zhejin related. A couple different ways that you can run this, but you're probably going to want to run Mang into Hell Cackle. Uh, Hell Cackle should be one of the best boss layers in the game because of its auto extra turn. But you basically uh, run it pretty standard to any of them. You throw a Mang on the raid boss. Your raid killer then goes and kills it. He has auto extra turn. You then throw some like truffle or something else that you want to do into the, in the mix, and boom, you're good to go. You could even use the new mythic if you really want to, somewhere in that uh, composition. Though, uh, do keep in mind if you are running like double stealthy with like thief class and then this thing, uh, it is more likely that your resummoners is going to get targeted by the Zugoff, which will kind of defeat the purpose of even having a summoner to begin with. So it might just be better to go with a bit more other loop option like King Gop Truffle and just kind of hold down the team. But pretty much any goblins would pretty much be fine. As long as you have like one truffle, have the thing there, and just have like some other thing to offset the team, you're probably going to be perfectly fine for the raid event. Plus most of them are pretty easy to begin with anyway, so won't really have too much of an issue there. Uh, there is one other thing I want to mention before we do end up ending out the video, and that is that uh, Weave Rum uh, faction, or Worm Run I mean, um, has finally gotten the change. Uh, I haven't actually had the time to mess around with it yet, so I'm just going to assume it works correctly now, and uh, we'll find out if they change it immediately again. <laughs> but uh, basically, this trait was uh, not really working correctly and was causing some crashes back when it was originally released, so it was immediately changed. And now they end up changing it back to what it was originally supposed to be, which basically nerfs all four of these troops. Uh, it is a good idea if you're going to be doing Pure Faction for uh, Worm Run to not have any of them traded, or at least not fully traded, as it actually becomes harder to do the faction if they are. 
So basically, all three of these other ones that aren't a legend has a 25% chance to convert a purple gem to a skull when my turn begins. Overall, pretty underwhelming, not really going to get much value from it. As far as the legend, it's kind of interesting, though it can easily backfire. Ends up creating two skulls when my turn begins, and you could end up putting like three of these onto your team with a raft for some pretty funny teams. Haven't actually had the time to mess around with this yet, but uh, there's some funny things that you could end up doing with this. Being able to spawn six skulls at the start of every single turn to try to get that value, and then kind of just going from there. Overall, is it worth using? No, and it's basically weaker than it was before because the 50% Dragon Star actually, well, not only helped itself, but also, of course, was uh, more viable than the other 50% Mana Star Dragon Star, and this basically just makes it a lot weaker than what it was, so this is what it was intended to be to begin with, but overall is just making everything weaker. So overall, just, yeah, you're going to ignore these troops even more than how much you've probably already been ignoring them. But that change is finally in place officially as of uh, today. Uh, something that uh, was supposed to be fixed like ages ago. But they finally got around to uh, fixing it now. And that was one small thing that was kind of in the 6.0 patch. That allowed it to uh, kind of be so. But uh, overall, um, most of that 6.0 patch, of course, isn't really coming until this next upcoming Monday. And for now, we'll be getting like a bunch of stuff throughout the week. Uh, not sure exactly everything. Like today, for example, we end up getting some deeds here for the 7 year anniversary. And I assume this will be continuing pretty much throughout the week with the various rewards. What exactly we'll be getting, who knows? But we'll find out. And then it basically ends with a brand new kingdom uh, coming in on uh, Monday, as well as everything that comes with that, as well as a brand new game mode. But anyways, guys, if you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll get around to them. If you want to copy paste any of the teams I end up mentioning, of course, as per usual, they are all in the description below. And I will catch you guys later. Hope you all have a wonderful week and happy seven year anniversary of Gems of War. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone.